Aloha, and thanks for listening to the Why Hypnosis Podcast, promoting quality hypnosis and NLP education on the islands of Hawaii, where I interview the top hypnotists, hypnotherapists, and NLP practitioners in the world so that you can learn their secrets to create positive changes in your life and the lives of others. You can subscribe to the Hawaii Hypnosis Newsletter at www.hawaiihypnosis.org. You will receive subscriber-only content such as free contests, articles to help you learn hypnosis and NLP, updates on upcoming hypnosis slash NLP trainings in Hawaii, plus an exclusive hypnosis audio that is only available to the newsletter subscribers. Thanks for listening. Aloha from Hawaii. Today I have a very special guest. This was actually a very impromptu podcast, and I'm really delighted to bring this podcast to you. Today my guest is Jonathan Chase from the UK. Jonathan Chase is an amazing hypnotist that has been around for quite a few years. And Jonathan Chase's website is jonathanchase.com. Jonathan, thank you very much for taking the time to allow me to interview you. No problem at all. Now, I've just given a really, really brief description about um, who you are. Would you like to give, I guess, maybe um, a little more detailed description? Um, oh, <laughs> I'm the hypnotist. Ah, good way to put it. <laughs> um, no, no, you know, um, I, I sort of... I sort of winced at the two at the being around for a lot of years. Think, um, yes, I have uh, just over three decades now in hypnosis, and um, and you never know. I mean, this could be the decade I retire. It could be, but it it might not be. I have a feeling you're going to be around for quite some more time. Mm, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> But uh, no, no, that's I, I, I think you've um, you pretty much summed it up. I've actually interviewed quite a few people from the UK, and I know you guys have a. Um, I guess I don't necessarily. I don't know if I could call it a, a problem, but it's kind of like a peculiar situation with your uh, the laws there, uh, mainly the 1952 Hypnosis Act. How? Uh, are there any things you would like to mention about the law? Or well, it's actually it's actually the 1952 Hypnotism Act, not Hypnosis Act. Um, but it's 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 no problem basically if you, if you're a good reputable re, reputable person with the right insurance, it, it only covers you if you it, it only it, it's only necessary if you're giving a show on hypnosis in a licensed establishment. You know, it's it's not a problem. There's no problem. It's only a problem to rank amateurs who, who think that paying eight hundred pounds a year is expensive for insurance. Um, a, a really good pro, you know. I mean, that's that's a third of a gig. So why even worry about it? You know. Uh, I, I, I suppose the biggest grudge is that it only affects stage hypnotism. It doesn't affect hypnotherapy. Uh, where you don't need any license of any kind whatsoever at all, and there's no legal legal binding, which seems rather strange when a stage hypnotist, everything we do, we do in front of an audience, and we have a room full of witnesses, and, and we're talking over a microphone, whereas, you know, hypnotherapists are working one-on-one -on -one with people in very vulnerable positions um, behind closed doors. So... The, the, that could be a bit of a problem, but it's only it's only a problem to the outside world because the people who shout about it most are the people who um, who are rank amateurs or, or doing something that they shouldn't be doing anyway. You know, it's 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 no problem. We 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 have to we have to have a license in the UK to watch television. I you know I I've, I've heard that you, you know. Um, you have to have a, a license legally, although most people don't. You have to legally have a license to have a, a dog. You know, um, but most people don't buy licenses for dogs because there's no policing of that. And to be frank, most stage hypnotists don't buy license don't 
apply for licenses either because there's no policing of that either. You know, I mean, the 1952 Hypnotism Act, we, we, we've got so many archaic and stupid laws in this country and nobody, nobody at all ever has been taken to court under the 1952 Hypnotism Act for doing a hypnosis show without license. Never, it will never happen, it never has happened and I don't know why everybody keeps bringing it to the, one particular guy keeps bringing it to the front because he's found some cheap insurance which doesn't insure you anyway for hypnosis. It insures you for other things. And, you know, besides that, people are using it in their marketing more than, than it's a necessary worry. So... Um, it's it's it, there's a big lack of education and understanding in this country. Yes, <laughs> as far as the law is concerned. Right. But, um, I'm sorry. I'd like to uh, mention something. You said that it how it doesn't cover uh, hypnotherapists. That actually seems quite kind of odd. If let's say if I were um, if I lived in the UK. Well, first off, if I lived in the UK, I would not have this accent. That's if I was a native there. And second, if I was a Let's say if I was doing a street uh, a street hypnosis, if I were to claim I was doing a hypnotherapy, would the 1952 Hypnotism Act still affect me? No, providing it was an act that went between you and the person that you were hypnotized. As soon as as soon as soon you start talking to an audience or you gather a group of people around you to watch, then you are giving a public demonstration of hypnosis. And then the 1952 Hypnotism Act comes into play. It's as simple as that. And I was told that by a, a fairly high-ranking police officer. Oh, okay. I think I've heard that recently, that if you if you do uh, sort of bring in a... Mind, mind, you, mind you, I've got to interrupt, that because I've got to say, Antonio, that, that the same high-ranking police officer, when questioned and asked if he would arrest somebody under the Act, he said, don't be stupid, we've got better things to do with our time. <laughs> exactly. You know, um, he said, if somebody brought if somebody brought you in for doing street hypnosis, if one of my, my officers brought you in for doing street hypnosis, he says, I'd put him on a reprimand for wasting his time. Oh, yeah, there's a lot. I'm sure there's a lot more things they could deal with. They could deal with murders, theft, and actual Absol stuff. Absolutely, absolutely. So, and anyway, the, the 1952 Hypnotism Act only gives the police... Only gives the police um, power of arrest and entry if you are performing without license. If the local council turn around and say you've got to go in and arrest that person. Now, if the local council don't do that, the police aren't going to bother at all. The only thing they'd be bothered about is whether you're blocking the highway. Yeah. In which case they would ask you to move on the same as they would any busker or or or, or anybody you know, protesting or anything like that. If you're causing an obstruction, they'll move you on. Otherwise, they won't, they won't, they won't bother. Oh, okay. Trust so me. It's, it's, it's ludicrous. It's, it's totally ludicrous because all this, all this stuff, all these rows and arguments that go on and on and on and on and on. And you ask the question, when was the last time somebody arrested for performing hypnosis? in the street, in a the theatre, or anywhere else, and it's never, ever, ever happened since 1952. That's longer than I've been alive. And I'm quite old. Oh, well, I, I, I'd imagine <laughs> what, you're, you're, you're in your 40s. Uh, yes. Um, okay. Well, it's only three years older than I am. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. But, uh, yeah, can we talk hypnosis? Because... That you, you know, that's that's the law. That, that's it. It doesn't go any further than that, really. Oh yeah, definitely. So I'm sure um, that one's been beaten around the bush plenty of times. Oh god, yes, yes. No, we... never, never, never by any anybody with. Um, if people go to my blog, which is um, at the hypnotist.co.uk. That's .co.uk, um, and, and if they go through the archives, they will find a big blog about that. They will also find a letter that I got off the Houses of Parliament uh, about street hypnotism, and uh, as far as they're concerned, it's busking, and 1952 Hypnotism Act doesn't come into play, and it, they would ignore it. So, um, you know, 
too many people are there just giving their opinion, which is totally uneducated. And what I did was I went to the Houses of Parliament through my MP and asked the question. And the answer is there, the letter's there, they can download it and everything. So if they go along to my blog, they'll find that. So it seems like a certain gentleman will have to um, find a new uh, marketing ploy. Well, you know, I don't see why they would change after they've been doing it for the last 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> How did you get inspired to get into hypnosis? Oh, um, back many, many, many years. Um, I, su I suppose the first person I ever saw giving suggestions rather than hypnosis um, and, and doing things was uh, I, I saw I saw the amazing Kreskin on television when I was a teenager. And I just thought it was awesome. And then I lived in Scotland for a little while, and there was a the, the, there was um, an Irish uh, an Irishman called Robert Halpin, who um, who virtually single handedly invented ninety percent of the routines that hypnotists use derivatives of now. You know, um, things like the onions, things like making people invisible. Nobody had ever done anything like that before helping. And, um, and the visual hallucinations, the, the falling in love with objects, you know, of which there's a million variations now, you know, everything from just in trances, getting them to, to shag a chair to, um, to, to, to the good old standard, giving them a mop and getting them to fall in love with it, you know. Uh, virtually all those routines on stage came from helping. Um, the direct hypnosis that, that, that we use, uh, um, that I use, and uh, people like as original hypnotists, people like Braid, Budwin, um, QA, you know, uh, direct stuff like that. That hasn't changed in hundreds of years. Uh, I forgot my question. Do you know that? <laughs> oh God! You almost made me. You almost giving me. It's almost like you're giving me uh, some covert suggestions for amnesia. I was asking you how you got into um into hypnosis. Do you, know, do you know? I love this. I love this. It comes off NLP as all the time. Everything you say is deliberate. You know, and I'm not doing anything at all. But now I know. Now you've said that. I know I can. Think about that. Yeah. Yep. You, you virtually, all the way from Hawaii to, to sunny Devon, where it's raining, by the way, um, you, you virtually stuck your chin through the internet and asked me to punch it. Think about that. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Now you're scared. Now you're scared. <laughs> I think I was reading on your blog recently. I believe it was on your blog. It might have been on a, a Facebook status about um, direct hypnosis. You're really not in the um, the indirect kind of uh, the indirect style, are you? Not really. No. Um, pe people very often ask me what's the difference between hypnosis and hypnotherapy, and I'll say. Usually, well, hy hypnotherapists like to get you all nice and relaxed and then they like to apply psychotherapy of one kind or another or neuro-linguistic programming or they like to dip into their toolbox and find an appropriate tool and, and apply that over, uh, over, over many minutes or, or, or hours or even visits, you know. The difference between that and the hypnotist is, as a hypnotist, I'll bang you under and tell you to stop it. I was expecting, I was expecting that uh, kind of answer. Mm. <laughs> and and people say, oh, well, that doesn't work. But the people who say that have never done it. I'm sure intent has a lot to do with it, too. Being able to actually take somebody, hypnotize them, and then getting them to get past whatever obstacle they have. You know, people people would would argue with this. I know a couple of British hypnotists that would argue with this intently, but this is true. Um, 
you, you, you can call it intent, you can call it confidence, you can call it whatever you like, but hypnotism, the same as any art, takes a certain degree of talent. And you, you, you can be as skilled as you like, but if you don't have the hypnotist talent for just tweaking things when they need to be tweaked, then it won't work for you. Um, certainly not to the degree that it works, say, for somebody like me. Can that talent, that talent cannot be taught. The same, the, the, the same as, you know, you can get people who can sing, they can hold a tune, but they, they, they are not Frank Sinatra. They're not Shirley Bassey. And the reason they're not is they don't have that something that makes it different. Yeah? Okay. But that can be discovered, and the only way you can discover that is to learn is to learn different ways of doing it. The sad thing is that um, hypnosis and hypnotism, you know, has has many, many, many um, dictionary meanings, and they all more or less say the same thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. They all more or less say the same thing. And the thing is, what they say is that hypnosis is a form of induced state of mind um, that, that, that's that's brought about by, by the power of suggestion. Now, I think that's what hypnosis is. That's what all the dictionaries and all the medical books think hypnosis is. And that's what the punters think hypnosis is. The only problem comes is when you start talking to the people who have been taught by hypnotherapy schools that it isn't that. Yeah? I follow you. And they're the only people who think it's something else. Because everybody else involved in, with, with hypnosis, the hypnotists, the, 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 the dictionaries, the medical jargon books, and, and certainly the most important people, the person in the street thinks that what happens when you, you when you become hypnotized is you lose all control the hypnotist takes over your mind changes your mind and that's it and when you know when people go to a hypnotist that's what they're expecting that's what they want and that's what they want to pay for they don't want to pay for NLP people outside of the the NLP hypnosis genre have never heard of NLP you know you walk out into the street now and say, who was Milton Erickson to the first person you meet? They'll look at you, gun out. No idea. Absolutely none whatsoever at all. You know? But if you say, um, name, name a hypnotist, I will almost certainly, certainly in this country, if you say name a hypnotist, they'll say... Um, they'll say Darren Brown, they'll say uh, Paul McKenna, um, they might even say Jonathan Chase if they've been to one of my shows recently, you know. Uh, but but they won't say they won't say Ericsson or Braid or or, or, or any of that because Play. they have no idea who those people are. None whatsoever at all, you know. I mean, I'm, I mean, it's it's rather like it's well, it's it's rather like you know. Um, Say so the automobile industry, you know, <laughs> you, you you ask the average guy in the street who invented motor cars, and you'd be surprised at how many say Henry Ford. No, he just did the mass production. Yeah, we know that, we know that, but not everybody does know that, and the vast majority of people don't know that. Yeah. Now, when when I get somebody, this is in my my book called. Um, called don't look in his eyes when I get somebody sitting down and I say what do you know about hypnosis you're wrong I'll show you what hypnosis is and then I hypnotize them yeah because they don't know what hypnosis is but I tell you what if you if you walked out into the street and said right walk up to the first person take the video camera and say show me what a hypnotized person looks like and every single person you ask will close their eyes, drop their head forward, and pretend to be asleep. Yeah? Exactly. That's a good way to, good that's way to look at it. That's what it is, because that's what people think it is. 
End of story. And if you don't have that, you don't probably don't have hypnosis. You have something that's similar. But, you know, birds have all got feathers, but some go quack and they're ducks. Yeah? Oh, brilliant. And there's only a duck that's a duck. <laughs> yeah? And you can get very close. You can get geese that look like big ducks. Or you can get swans that look like graceful ducks. But a duck looks a duck. And hypnosis is hypnosis. Huh? And that's what I teach. And that's what I've been teaching for for years now. I mean, I'm, I, I've been virtually full-time teaching. I very rarely do um, anything outside of class anymore. And I've been virtually full-time teaching now for seven, eight years. I've been, I've been teaching for 17 years. But... Um, you know, and, and the thing is that being a full-time teacher means that you do try out everybody else's stuff as well. And it also means that you can experiment in ways that maybe you couldn't, maybe um, you certainly can't do in practice, you know. You can and, experiment and that's for how to find out what works and what doesn't. Somebody recently told me that you had taught a lot of the, I guess you could call them up-and-coming hypnotists in the UK, such as Anthony uh, Jacqueline, Reggie Blackwood and whatnot. Is there any truth to this? It's it's Jacqueline. Um, Jacqueline. Jacqueline. Quinn. Jacqueline. Okay, I'm sure if he if he hears this, he'll probably, uh, he'll probably <laughs> give me a good ribbon. He will. Um uh, and uh, Anthony was an established hypnotherapist, and, and uh, along with his father, Freddie, um, and and they were teaching people hypnotherapy before they came to me. But they both came to me in two thousand and four, along with um, Kev Sheldrake, because they wanted to to learn more direct um, stage techniques. Which um, a lot of a lot of which now is the, well is the basis of what Anthony teaches. Um, so, not I'm just sorry. the skills, but the techniques as well. So, so yes, um, as I'm sure Anthony will tell you, you know, I, I, I was my 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 state hypnosis training was the springboard for for what he's doing now. Yes. No, the, um, so you said that he wasn't, that him and his father wanted to learn more of the direct styles from you. Were you saying that they use more of uh, the, uh, the indirect style in their um, their private sessions? In, in, in hypnotherapy, um, as far as I know, yes. Okay, I always, um, I always... They teach more... more. Therapeutic methods. Um, and Anthony's father, who, who hypnotised me on the course, um, well, had a go at hypnotising me. Um, uses a very, very it, it's it's direct, but it's not dynamically direct. You know. Oh, okay, so it's kind of it's it's the it's the direct hypnosis, but not with so much pizzazz. Um. It, 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 it's there's a, there's a lot of metaphor involved in it. You, you would really have to talk to Anthony and, and Freddie about their methods as far as therapy is concerned. Okay, actually, that uh, sounds like I'm gonna have to contact uh, either one of them fairly mm. soon. Yes. Yeah. How, how, I mean, hopefully, Anthony will say that his methods have changed considerably since he trained with me, but. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully, yeah. Say, hopefully he says they he got better. Not. He may not. Yeah. Sorry. No, I say hopefully he says um, that he improved since he uh, trained with you. Is it well, you know, you, you know, learning different methods in hypnosis isn't about um, really. It isn't about improving. It's it's about. Um, I always think I always think that the the essence of skill um, and the essence of expertise is that is that the expert will do less than you will to get the same result. 
um, that, that 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 doesn't mean that that doesn't mean that it's improved as far as the the the, the client's concerned because the results are the same, but it's easier for you to do. Oh, yeah. so you can basically get the same uh, result without having to go to an extreme. Oh yeah, hypnotherapy, hypnotherapy, and psychotherapy, and neuro linguistic programming in the hands of a of a competent person. They, they they can get the same results. They're not hypnosis, but they can get the same results. You know, but but then again, you've got a headache. I can give you paracetamol. I can give you aspirin. I can give you dimorphine. They'll all get rid of your headache. I can I can give you a guillotine. That'll get rid of your headache forever. Well, yeah, they. But, <laughs> yeah, but you know, um, I have never ever ever on record said that hypnotherapy. It doesn't work. I have said that a lot of forms of hypnotherapy that are based around relaxation and just repeating suggestion over and over and over again aren't necessarily hypnosis. The whole relaxal uh, therapy. Yeah, and and there's a big difference between relaxed therapy and and hypnosis. Then pure direct suggestion hypnosis, and and it's a shame, you know, because like um, what happened was we got to. A point where Ericsson came on the scene and there's a lot of things that are significant about Ericsson coming on the scene that people forget. Number one, he was a clinical psychologist, he was a medical doctor, he was an MD. I was going to say an interesting thing when you uh, said some, uh, mentioned about Milton Erickson being the uh, clinical psychologist, I think it was probably about half a year ago, maybe a year ago, I found out that he um, I believe he was a professor at Wayne State University in Detroit, where I used to live. So mm -hmm. I found that to be quite interesting. But if you want to go on, I'm just kind of going off into a side tangent. Well, well, you see, Erickson based his analysis around his clinical psychotherapy. You know, um, the, 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 there's a British comic, I don't know if you're aware of him, a, a Scotsman called Billy Connolly. Oh, yeah, Billy Connolly, yeah. Real you know, funny guy. Billy Connolly story that I was told by one of my students m many years ago. And Billy plays the banjo. And uh, and he was in the banjo class. And the guy running the banjo class said, hey, Billy, can you take the class tomorrow? And Billy says, well, I, I, can he take the class? I, he said, I'm only on page nine. He says, oh, don't worry about it, Billy. He says, I'm only on page 11. Yeah. Now, <laughs> you only need to be two pages in front of everybody else in the manual to be a teacher. Yeah. Now, compared to the way clinical psychology was at the time, Erickson looked like a god. Oh, he, was chapters, now, he was chapters ahead. Yeah. But he was only chapters ahead. I mean, um, a guy called George Estabrooks, who Anthony Jacobin would tell you a lot about, a guy called George Estabrooks, who taught Erickson a lot of hypnosis techniques. He was a stage hypnotist, and Erickson didn't want anybody to find out that he'd learnt stuff off Estabrooks. But, you know, guys like that were, like, they were books, they were volumes in front of what Erickson was doing, you know. Um, Erickson, Erickson could take up to 12 or 16 months to get a positive result with people. Ooh, that's quite you know? some time. Yeah, yeah, but but it's average for a, for a clinical psychologist. Yeah. Now, what happened was that the schools of hypnotherapy wanted to get recognition from the medical fraternity so they thought well if we do it the way he's doing it we might get that recognition which was a complete not a waste of time because they still haven't got that recognition not to any great degree whatsoever at all if anything the divide's even bigger you know and that meant that that psychotherapy came more and more into hypnosis but that's not what the original original hypnotists did and they had remarkable results i mean james braid you, you, you know, um, did 250 ophthalmic operations. He operated on eyes, for God's sake, using hypnosis as the, as the only form of anaesthetic. Personally, I'd sooner take the anaesthetic, but 
But the fact that he was using direct suggestion hypnosis and he was getting results like that, hypnotherapy doesn't come close to that nowadays. Well, that was back in what, the uh, middle 1800s, I think? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so you know... Um, Lots of people are saying, "Oh, we need to bring we, we we need to bring hypnosis, we need to bring hypnosis into into the modern world." Well, I think the easiest way of doing that is to do it the way that the old guys did it, and not take errors and errors, and not use relaxation and not use relaxotherapy. They basically placed somebody into a trance, and then told them that it wouldn't hurt. Yeah, just keep it simple and uh, to the point. Use the own marketing and, uh, uh, thing that I always use, which is KISS, K I S S, keep it simple, stupid. You know? <laughs> and, and people say, oh yeah, but that doesn't last. And you say, show me the research. And they say, oh well, this school, yeah, well, who do you think taught the people who run the schools? You know? And nobody ever asks that. Nobody, very few people, apart from on interviews like this, say, "John, where did you learn hypnosis?" And I actually learnt off a Red Indian knife throwing act and a comedian. Hmm. Oh, so I think. <laughs> so did you really, did you really learn it from in that way? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They taught me what they know and knew, and then I read a lot, and then being a very observer based person you know i just went out and watched as many people as i possibly could and then i copied them basically oh, okay i thought maybe you were going to say you learned uh, hypnosis uh you know those little ads in the back of the kind of books in like the 50s and the 60s oh good lord no reading books not my thing i mean, I mean i've got a library of books half of which i've i'm, I'm got past the first couple of pages <laughs> no, I've got so many books I'll, I'll open them I actually still have a ton of hypnosis books I start reading them then I'll get a new book I'm, then I just never really complete the books give me the video give me the DVD you know um, in saying that of course I've just uh, my my latest hypnosis book um, don't look in his eyes how to be a confident original hypnotist that's now available on amazon.com and dot, dot ca and dot J, jp and, and and all the other ones and it's also on kindle um actually i wanted to ask you about that um someone recently told me that the um that like i personally thought it was a new book i thought um so I know it's, you had your other book. I can't quite remember the title right now. Deeper and Deeper. Oh, okay, now that, are these the same books or are they completely different? Oh, no, no, no. Um, deeper and Deeper is purely stage hypnotism. Um, Don't Look in His Eyes is basically how to use hypnotism off stage. Oh, okay, okay. And notice I'm not saying for therapy because uh, hypnotism can be used off stage for therapy. It can be used for personal development. Um, it can be used for entertainment, for, for, for self entertainment, you know. Um, we, we've got one guy over here who, who um, makes a living taking people on hypno holidays. Like, you know, um, people who want to travel to Hawaii but, but haven't got the time or the money to do that, so you just bang them under and take them to Waikiki. Ah, I like <laughs> how you pronounce uh, Waikiki. Um, no idea how to pronounce that. The same as you've got no idea how to pronounce Jacqueline. I'm probably going to definitely get ribbed from uh, uh, Anthony. I'll just call him Anthony to make it easier uh, on myself. He's definitely going to probably give me a little... Uh, a little uh, crap for messing his name up. I'm wondering if you would be interested in possibly giving away maybe a copy of your book or maybe if you have a DVD, a copy of your, um, one of your DVDs to a member of my audience. I t I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what I'll do. We've done this. We've done this before um, with with huge success. Um, if if the members of your audience pop along to their local Amazon, whether that's in Canada, whether it's in America, whether it's it's in Japan, whether it's it's in the UK. Yeah, if they pop along and they buy a copy of uh, "Don't Look in His Eyes," it'd be a confident original hypnotist.
the best review I will send them. Um, they give you their, their parcel address, and I will post them the original hypnosis DVD, which is worth about thirty-five pounds. So you're basically saying for the competition, if somebody goes out and they buy a copy of, you said either a PDF or a Kindle version of your book, that they well, not a PDF, but if they, if they buy an Amazon copy of the of the actual book and leave a review, yeah, or leave a review on Kindle, then then that, and then send the review to you, and then you decide which is the best review. I would say the next four weeks. Yeah. Okay. And, and you give me their address, and I will send them a signed copy of the original Hypnosis DVD, which is worth about thirty-five pounds. Oh, that's so that's about three million dollars, isn't it? It's <laughs> well, yeah, three million. Actually, no, I think no. If you were to I'm go, joking, to the... I'm joking. It's three, it's three million Australian. Now, yeah, if you're if you're going to the Philippines, I'm sure there would be it'd be a huge exchange right there. <laughs> oh, one thing that I um that I usually like for my guests to do is to do like an impromptu um, hypnosis sessions. I know not everybody knows what hypnosis feels like, or I guess how um what their experience would be like. Is this something you'd be comfortable with? And if not, no, I, I, absolutely not. Wouldn't touch it with a barge pole. Um, we 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 live in a, the age of litigation, you know. <laughs> and exactly. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't take that risk. You know, the, the, there's an Australian hypnotist. I don't know if you've ever, ever heard of him called Mar Martin St James. Oh, okay. His his life story. Um, the, the the book of his his autobiography is probably the best hypnosis titled book I have ever seen. It's called Sleepy Bastard. <laughs> uh, you, you, you've got to go along to his Australian website and buy that book. It doesn't teach you much about hypnosis, but it tells you a lot about a hypnotist. Um, now Martin was doing was doing German television. Uh, back in the 60s, I think it was, and 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 he now he was doing the induction in English. It was being um, translated into German, and that evening they had a, over a million telephone calls of people who were claiming to have been hypnotised in their living rooms. Now he got away with that. And since then, no, no television or radio show has ever broadcast a hypnotic induction. And that's you're talking about just um, the UK, uh, the inductions in the UK. I would imagine over the press. Um, no, the, Ameri the American televisions tend to stay away from the actual induction as well. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. They. Yeah, that's one thing. Or, or they only show part of it. They only show part of it. No. But he will touch it with a bodge bomb. It's just too risky litigation-wise because you only want one idiot, one ambulance chaser, to say, um, I, I was listening to this on my radio in the car, <laughs> and the next thing you know, you know. That's why that's why every reputable hypnotist that, that sells hypnosis recordings will have somewhere on the recording, if the recording is designed to bring into trance, um, you know, and that's what hypnosis is, hypnotic trance, uh, then you will see in big red letters, you know, do not play this whilst driving or operating machinery or doing anything that could be a danger to you or to others. You know, that's just pure common sense. Exactly. I know some people that, um, that I guess you could call themselves the uh, trance junkies or talked to a couple of people and they're like, oh, they're like, I'm fine, I can listen to it, I can always switch it off. I was like, you know what, there's, there's variables, there's always variables in human behavior and you, like, while you may be fine, you think you might be fine, something might happen and you might end up hurting somebody else on the road. So it's definitely something to well, say. Well, it could, be, it, could, it could be done another way as well, you know, I mean, say they are fine and they've got your, 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 your CD playing away in the car and they're fine and everything else, but some idiot runs into them and kills them. Now, when 
their death is investigated, it's your CD in their player. You know? Oh, I never thought about that. And that could easily be used by a clever lawyer <laughs> trying to save the skin of the, the person who actually caused the accident. So, you know, it's not just, it's, it's, you've got to think these things through, you know? Yes. It's, it's exactly the same when you're doing obviously. You have to think through what you're doing. You have to know what you're doing. You have to know where you're going. You know, and it, all this, all this, let's go in there and find out what happens is complete and utter rubbish, in my opinion. You know, you should know exactly what you're going to do before you do it and, and make sure that you do it well. Because, you know, I'll just put it, I'll just put them, I suppose people think it's a joke. I'll just put up a. Uh, a post on my Facebook page, a lot of people put up, you know, um, I can help you with phobias and panic attacks and anxiety. And I'll just put one up that says, I can give you phobias, panic attacks, anxiety, sleeping problems, smoking habits, make you fat, nervous, and on a good day, make you depressed and paranoid. If I don't know how you work and I can't produce those things, I can't cure them. Ah, it's a good way to, to a good angle to uh, look at it. Absolutely, I think so. Anyway, it's the one I teach. <laughs> it's the one I teach, and and like Ericsson, you know, I'm 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 in the old wheelchair, so that makes me that makes me an expert, doesn't it? Ah, you know, and you actually brought up an interesting point. How has your um, disability affected your performance? How has it either uh, improved it or been a hindrance? Neither. It hasn't made an iota of difference. Um, it does give me a unique selling point. Does that sound terrible? Um, uh, it gives me a USP, you know. Um, it hasn't affected my career in any way whatsoever at all. I suppose you could say that it does. It it does allow me to um, to build empathy with. With, with, with clients, people on stage a little faster, but um, besides that, it, it doesn't really come into it, you know. I speak as well, if people go to jonathanchase.co.uk, that's that's another site, um, and, and I speak on disability, um, and, and I certainly use it, hopefully, to inspire other people, but um, I'm using that as, a, as an advantage or other, as a disadvantage. Um, it's it's a bit like it's it's a, it's a bit like you know I know lots of really good hypnotists who um, no I know two or three really good hypnotists who are actually dyslexic and their education on hypnosis and psychology is 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 quite um, of a low level but they're absolutely brilliant at what they do so I don't think that disability um, harms it in any way and I don't think that it actually uh, improves it you know it's it's just one of those things you know i mean i'm looking at, at a picture of you on skype at the moment and it's it's like saying does the beard help are there any other products that you would like to mention yeah, yes. they're all well there's um the super suggestion which isn't hypnosis really it's suggestion, but they're recordings that are on my website. So. And I know you have at least at least three websites. I know of you. Have, you have your Jonathan Chase. No, no, I have, I have three websites. I have um, Jonathan Chase dot com, which um, is is my my main home site. I have uh, Jonathan Chase dot co dot uk, which is my speaker's site. And I have the hypnotist.co.uk, which is my blog. Oh, okay. And now I was going to say there, I know you do have one project, but I don't know if you can really talk about it the um, along the personal development line. Oh, a new product that we've got coming out called Restart. Yes. No, um, that's, that's in the throes of being developed right at this moment in time. So it's not a case that... I can't talk about it. It's it's a case that it's just not finished. 
Oh, there's not a whole lot to talk about as of yet. Um, no, there's lots to talk about, but until it's finished, <laughs> I'm not going to because um, it, it would only be bits and pieces, you know. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure we can do. A, we can do another. When, when that gets up and running, we can do a, 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 a potty on it. But it, it's that that that's not hypnosis at all. You know, I'm, I'm very I'm very circumspect. I, I know exactly what hypnosis is, and, and and I'm not saying that 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 restart is hypnosis. It isn't. Um, the the chinosis that I do is it uses um, symbolism and, and massage, but it's not actually hypnosis. And and, and um, my speaking certainly has got nothing to do with hypnosis. So you know, it's it's important that people understand that hypnosis is a standalone subject, as far as I'm concerned. It's all like a separate. It's a separate entity in and of itself. Yes. Yeah. You know, um, and it's not the only thing I do. You know, it's it's a little like I mean, I, you know, you got people who say I'm a stand-up comedian, and all they do is stand-up comedy. But I know some, I know some really good magicians that also do stand-up comedy, that also do some acting, that also do. But when you're in that mode, you're in that mode, and and the two things don't really come, don't really cross over. You know. And some things you have to keep um you have to keep separate well it's not that you have to it's just that they are even if you tried to blend them it really probably wouldn't work too well well people do that all the time people blend one thing in with another and i just think it's silly you know um, and if i was teaching buddhism i wouldn't go into a into a roman catholic church to teach it yeah true true um so, so it's. I always say at the start of my courses, right? What you're going to learn here is hypnotism. You are not going to learn neurolinguistic programming. You are not going to learn hypnotherapy. You are not going to learn psychotherapy. And you are certainly not going to learn to sing. This is hypnotism, and it's hypnotism I'm going to teach you. You know, and but but so many of the hypnotherapy courses now teach so many different. Um, approaches, fields of thought, psychologies, um, you know, there's no, there's no definite target or aim in them, and I just think it's a very silly way of doing things. Oh, a bit, uh, a bit watered down. Well, absolutely, you know, um, teach them what you teach them, and that's it. Like you said, kiss, keep it simple, stupid. There's actually one last thing. I ah, this is you know, this would only take uh, maybe a couple seconds. There's a little game I'll, I like to do with um, hypnotists. Is I guess uh, the free association game. I'll just say a um, a word and then you follow up with a uh, whatever uh, first comes to your mind. Would you be up for a quick little uh, jab at that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let me see. Let me think of one. Uh, trance. Hypnosis. Hypnosis. Hmm. Okay. NLP. Hypnosis. Milton Erickson. <laughs> Hypnosis. I think I know where this is going. Uh, hypno thoughts. <clears throat> Hypnosis. Um, Jonathan Chase. Hypnosis. Boy, yeah, you're going to definitely get a laugh well, out of me. If you were talking about disability and you said that, I'd say public speaking. Ah. Yeah, you. <laughs> when I wear the hypnotist hat, I wear the hypnotist hat. And here, I'm wearing the hypnotist hat. Ah, that's a... You just had me think of quite a bit right there. There's no such thing as free association. Yeah. If if I get you if I get you into a room and I I, I, I would guess I would find it fairly easy to manipulate you in such a way that um, that 
I could make you emotive, either happy or sad. Yeah? I'm sure you could. And then if I fire some words at you, depending on where you are emotionally, your your response changes. Oh, okay. I see, I see where you're coming from. Always. You, 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 you know. Um, if, if you work with somebody therapeutically and, and you change their emotions and you do some, you, you do some free association before and after, depending on where they are emotively, they will answer different, differently. That makes complete now, this, sense. This is one of the, this is one of the, 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 the clinical psychology things, um, that has crept into, my beautiful art of hypnosis, which is basically telling people what to do. Um, and, you know, it, it's it's sort of like the good old, you, 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 the one that always makes me smile, you know, you won't do anything you don't want to do, then why are they, why are they, why have they come to see you? They've come to see you because they are doing something they don't want to do. And they can't bloody stop it, you know. And that old thing that the you know now hypnotists can force you to do something you wouldn't normally do. What they're normally doing is being fat, or smoking, or being anxious for no reason at all, or running away from a perfectly harmless insect. Yeah. Oh, okay. If we can't stop them doing that, if we can't change what they would normally do then we're totally, completely, and absolutely useless to them anyway. Well, yeah. Give me a good, a good little uh, lesson when I was trying to do a simple game. Well, yeah, but but that's what games are for. Constantly learning. My guy's constantly teaching because I'm a pain in the arse that way. God, that's right. You said, <laughs> you, when you started this off, you had, um, I think it was off the record, you told me that you're really opinionated and what to... I really, uh, I really like that in a person. Thank you. And I'm sure you'll, um, you've probably seen some of my posts on Facebook and realized that I'm quite opinionated as well. Um, yeah. We can keep it there because I don't want to uh, mix any of my politics in because once I get started on politics, people, um, they tend to uh, want to run away and not even deal with it anymore. No, I don't do politics. You know, I I see hypnosis as as uh, as an art. Yeah, oh, it's yeah. something it's something that people do with people. I, I don't see how politics or science or anything else like that comes into it. You know, science destroys art. It doesn't it doesn't enhance it. You know, um, knowing how the molecules of 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 a, of a paint hold together. On, onto the canvas doesn't make you a better painter, you know. And and I, I think the, the 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 insidious creeping of of science, especially a pseudoscience like psychology, into hypnosis is actually something that spoils it a lot. And to be quite frank, it's usually spouted by people who have had no formal training in psychology at all. You know, they've read a book and think that's it. That's all you need. You know, um, it, it's it's a bit like people making diagnosis and and then saying to a doctor, you know, well, I think this is wrong with your patient. You know, and that doctor with twelve years training might get a little bit upset when they're told what's going wrong with somebody who's read two books and been on Wikipedia. Well, sadly, that's the way of the that's the way of the world, you know. Um, so hypnosis to me is not, and th therefore politics don't come into it, you know. Oh, definitely. Politics may use hypnosis at times, but it, the other way around, not. So no, much. they don't. No, they don't. No, they don't. No, sorry, sorry. Do you know the easiest people to fool? That, that something deliberate is being done in language patterns, body language, and God knows what else, are the people who are into NLP and body language. Exactly. It's all, it's all complete and utter rubbish. It's like, um, uh, before I forget this thought, uh, uh, Darren Brown, I know a bunch of people come out and say, like, he's using this pattern, this pattern, this pattern, when there's a good chance that he's using that as a simple, um, simple guise and misdirection for what he's actually doing. 
Well, I wouldn't say it was a good chance. Darren Brown, first and foremost, is a magician. Exactly. And, you know, if he touches anything, I get highly suspicious. <laughs> yeah? And if you believe anything you see on the television, you are a complete fool. You know? I mean... Anybody who's ever been involved, anybody who's ever been on a television set. You, you, I, I used to do a lot of talk shows, you know, and, and you see people in the audience spontaneously putting their viewpoint forward, don't you? Yep. What you don't see is the floor manager holding your name up on a piece of card because you've been told to only speak when your name is held up. You what don't you see don't behind see... The what you don't see is the signs going applause, applause, applause to get to cue the audience to applaud. Now everybody knows about that, but when you're watching the program, you totally forget it. Yeah. Now Darren Brown states quite categorically that he is first and foremost a showman. Secondly, he is a bloody good magician. Which means that swapping an envelope, uh, uh, you know, a, a letter-sized envelope, one for another, is a piece of piss for Darren Brown. Yeah? The guy can hide a pack of cards behind his hand. A whole pack. Loose cards. Yeah? So... Um, a lot of, but it's the NLPers that will jump in and say, oh yes, he's using, and, and, and the reason that Obama is doing this, he's doing this, he's doing the other, and the reason that Obama got voted for was advertising, and that he just spent more money than everybody else, you know, and that isn't hypnosis. Uh, Jonathan, you know, I knew my last comment. I had a little, I had kind of an, uh, a hunch that my last comment would get you going on a uh, opinionated rant, and I'm no rant, no, no. I mean, I actually like Darren Brown. I think Darren Brown is probably the best thing that's happened to stage hypnosis in twenty years. Yeah. No, I'm saying I'm just um, when I said the comment about uh, politics, I said that kind of with the intention that I had a feeling that you would um, have some opinions on that. And that proved to be the case. <laughs> I suppose that's politics, really, isn't it? Oh, definitely. Oh. There you go. <laughs> you know, Jonathan, I just want to say thank you very much for allowing me to interview you today. You're very welcome, my friend. It, it gave me a welcome break from working. <laughs> I just want to say, again, thank you very much, and we will talk soon. You can also find us on the internet at these locations. Facebook.com forward slash Hawaii Hypnosis, Twitter.com forward slash Hawaii Hypnosis, and MySpace.com forward slash Hawaii Hypnosis. Thanks for listening.